Hello, my name is Reverend Tom Stanley and I am the senior minister here at Central Christian Church in Enid, Oklahoma. I want to welcome you to our online ministry. During these profoundly challenging times, it is important to remain safe, socially distanced, and wear a mask whenever possible. My hope and prayer for you and your family is that you will remain safe and healthy and blessed by God. Our online ministry here at Central Christian Church is growing. We are touching the lives of thousands of people every single month. Our goal is to share the gospel and good news of Jesus Christ, our love for our neighbors, and the welcome of God to everyone. If you're new to our ministry, please check out our website at centralenid.org and our Facebook page. A completely new website is in the works and will be rolling out in the next few weeks, so don't be surprised if it changes suddenly. If you would like to join this fellowship and partner your ministry with ours, we would welcome you with open arms. All are welcome in our ministry, fellowship, and worship. If you would like to support the ministry of this place as we change lives of people in Enid, in Oklahoma, and around the world, there, there are several ways that you can give. You can connect to our website and give online. You can download the Givelify app and find Central Christian Church of Enid and donate that way. We also have the ability to take ACH deposits which are directly withdrawn from your bank account. You can use your credit card on the website or on the Givelify app. If you have questions about how to support the ministry of God here at Central, please don't hesitate to call our office. My deepest prayer is that God will bless you and make God's face to shine down upon you and grant you peace today. Have a blessed day. Good morning. The title of the devotional this morning is a question. <clears throat> Who's really in charge? One of the great tragedies of our lives is to give up the control of our life to someone else. Not many of us would be willing to do this if we understood that this is what is really happening. Unfortunately, the ways presented to us are so subtly disguised that we are unable to recognize them. Think, for example, of the basic idea of a force controlling us. I'm talking about either an evil, evil, or a good force. They are, incidentally, two sides of the same coin. One of the black comedians has made famous the cliché, the devil made me do it. Such a belief, which goes further and deeper than merely a cliché, is based on the power of evil controlling your life and you allowing that power of evil to control your life. Whether you personify this force of evil as Satan, the devil, or whatever, you and I need to come to grips, and this is a very crucial battle for every person, we need to come to grips with whether we believe someone can make us do an evil thing against our will. I want to go on record as believing this to be wholly untrue. You may give up to and decide to do something evil, sinful, bad, or wrong to damage another person, but no one, I mean no one, makes you do it. We are living in a time in which we seek for all sorts of ideological, psychological, theoretical, or spiritual scapegoats. The bottom line is, I am responsible. And the line that follows that one is, and I can change my life. Let me move to another more common area in which we may allow another to control us. We may live our lives in such a defensive manner and posture that if someone were to suggest 
a way of doing something that down deep we really would like to do and recognize that it would really be better for us. Our defensiveness against the person keeps us from choosing it. The very fact that someone else suggests it or recommends it or thinks of it determines for us that we cannot choose it. That is, we allow our life to be controlled by the other person in a way which removes the possibility of choosing what the other person has suggested. It's kind of like saying, if you like it, I'm not free to choose it. And that would be the readout of this loss of control by loss of choice. Another tragic loss of control over our lives is to believe that if you make or force me to do something, I cannot possibly do it and certainly not enjoy it. This is why so many persons have difficulty in believing that Jesus chose to die. If, they reason, Jesus was crucified by the people, then he could not possibly have chosen to die. Well, that's not true either. Jesus had the power to choose. You see, you and I really and firmly believe that Jesus was in charge of his life. He had the power to choose, and he chose to use that power. He made the decisions in the face of suggestions, obstacles, and those who shouted, crucify him. I think this is what Jesus was talking about in the Sermon on the Mount when he said, if anyone forces you to go with them one mile, go with them two. A God-directed person is still in charge of his life, completely in charge. He is simply making decisions which evidence who he is following and the God and the Christ in whom he believes. Be careful. Answer the question, who's really in charge, by saying, I am in charge, and I am, and I will be responsible.